when we got around to recording Assimilate, uh, the main difference was there was you know live drums on this album. So I thought it'd be wise if we you know did some pre-production, um, especially on the drums, just to make sure you know we could get it to sound uh, you know how I wanted. So we ended up just spending an evening down at uh, a local studio in Melbourne. I got the engineer there to uh, to help us out with that. <laughs> And um, yeah, the results that we were getting were really, really good. I was quite happy with that. So basically, we just kind of uh, yeah got into recording the album. I mean, after the awful experience of recording the first album and just you know everything possible that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, I was trying to work out the best way and the smoothest way to record the simulate. So I decided I wanted no part in engineering the album and uh, I got a guy from Perth, an engineer from Perth over to record it. That way I could just concentrate on the, you know, the performance and not get too caught up in the actual process of recording. The recording process for the Berserkers to simulate album was done a little bit differently to normal. So we're beginning to um, set up this mess. So you walk out of the bedroom into the, uh, the master bedroom. Rather than paying for studio time and trying to record everything within that studio time, we went around to all the studios around Melbourne and hired some of the best equipment around. We had preamps by Focusrite and Avalon, uh, LA-2A compressors, uh, Poltec EQs, and as well as some of my own studio equipment, which I had brought from Perth. Seeing as we had set up our own studio purely for the recording process, it meant that we were not bound by studio booking times and trading hours. We were able to record for as long as we want, whenever we wanted. Recording the drums presented its own challenges uh, for the fact that we trigger all the drum sounds and we were getting too much spill from the live snare drum and it wasn't blending too well with the triggered snare. So I went out and got a uh, electronic drum pad and uh, Gary basically had to learn how to, to play on that, which, which wasn't too easy. Uh, we've been trying the amps and things all day and it's looking like the uh, Marshall has come up with the goods. So the good thing about working with Gary, as far as the drums are concerned, is he can read drum notation. So I can go ahead and program all the drums, you know, using logic and then can notate them and print them out and give them to him and he can go ahead and learn them, uh, which, is, which is what he did. I always have real problems naming songs, so we end up using the working titles, you know, usually till well after the album's recorded. So a few of the song titles here you may be uh, unfamiliar with, such as 300, which was Disregard and um, other things. It was really interesting actually recording the drums because in the control room, you know, we heard all the triggered sounds as you do on the album. But actually when Gary was recording in the room, all you heard was this really muffled drum kit. And uh, it, was, it was bizarre. Yep. Let's go. Yes.
you know, especially through here, um, Gary was having real problems with, I mean, this is obviously a fast part, but the stick, the tip of the stick actually sticks to the electronic pad and uh, it just gets flying out of his hands. Same spot. Anyway, we've just taken a break from, uh, from drums and we'll go in and see what Gary's doing. I'm just showing how metal the recording is. Mm, very shocking. Very much unlike last time. This time the bass is actually quite loud when we record it. Doing a bit of uh, carcass. And we just had this huge sound every time I played, even though the whole uh, rig was in another room or another part of the house, the whole house would shake. Uh, it was really good. I was very happy with that. For me it was easy because I knew what standard I had to perform at in the studio and I didn't have to kind of bring myself up to scratch while I'm trying to re actually record the parts. I've managed to knock the bass off in something like three hours which was, uh, which was good. It wasn't like the guitar experience for the first time where I was sitting there for an entire week belting out take after take after take. Um, and it was also, uh, it was easier because everyone had their own instrument and their own Thing that they were supposed to like look after and I think that made it easier on Luke as well. How was that? Uh, I think I bummed a note on the second half. Oh no. I bummed a note. That'll do for me. Oh! <laughs> yes, surprise, surprise. Good afternoon. Um, yes, things have changed. I'm letting bum notes look through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, doing Dissimulate was exactly the opposite kind of experience to doing uh, the first album. One take wonder. Here we go. Oh, stop. I can I can do I can do a better start than that. Oh. <laughs> that leaves no one wins. Oh, that will be the vocal takes, dude. Me rushing in, fucking loosening my tie, going right. Are we ready? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's up to be, yeah, just record work. And um, I've set up the free roll so it's ready to go. Corporal Jigs or Bondre. You want to listen? Hey, go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. I just, I just don't know how long it goes for, so I'll try it again.
what's up. How are you all doing, gentlemen? Very well, thank you. How's the uh, grease, the uh, lube going? Very good. Here's our setting. Recording was pretty cool, you know, like I just learnt the stuff and went in there and did it and it was, you know, it was all good. Some of the riffs, some of the lines were kind of hard to do, but, you know, after a few takes or whatever, it was all cool. Whatever you want. Oh, I'll cool. line it up later. Yep, anyway. no worries. Now, try and take it to the end of the cycle. Yeah, cool. take to do this on? An hour. Alright, well here's your test. Uh, there, there's the yeah, time on my phone. 11.40. Well, What's your ver verdict of that? My verdict is this riff here that Sam's got is just so... Here we go, it's happening! So fucking gay. It's all happening Gary, look. And I refuse to play it. This just... <laughs> That's it. Refuse to play it. You here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Unfortunately, halfway through the recording, Aiden, our engineer, had some uh, family emergency and had to fly back to Perth, which is over the other side of the country. I mean, it's a four and a half hour flight, so it wasn't like he had to go you know, back home around the corner. And uh, there I was again. And uh, I was the one who had to step up and uh, finish the engineering of the, uh, of the album. <laughs> you know, I wasn't interested in in engineering the album and um, I don't know what it is about this band but things always seem to happen and uh, I'm the one that ends up having to do everything so um, yeah of course I wasn't as, as strict with everyone as I was on the first album because I couldn't put myself through that again and um, you know we let a lot of stuff through that of course I wouldn't have on the, on the first album but again I mean recording the first album was pure lack of any experience and um, you know, at least I'd had some experience. It sounds fucking gay riffs. <laughs> it's string crossing fucking stupidity. <laughs> Dude, we've done the edit of it, weren't we? We've done the first version there. <laughs> yep. Well done, man. Well done, mate. Oh, Jinx. Thanks for coming. Five minute break. <laughs> How was that? Is it just one of those keyboard things? Doesn't. <laughs> doesn't uh, transcribe properly, does it? Doesn't transcribe. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't transpire. Fucking don't <laughs> still came through and would like make suggestions and pull us up on like things and uh, suggest other things it wasn't anywhere near the same level that he had to do that on the first album <laughs> What do you call this program? Oh, uh, yeah, I call these gay tools. <laughs> <laughs> Shit house tools. That's right. Oh, good afternoon. Oh, you should have put it on when Logic was back on. Oh, he gave a smile to the oh. camera. I 
I mean, that's where I do feel most comfortable doing the vocals. I mean, you know, the vocal booth is in my house and, uh, you know, I can really perform at my best there. Doing the vocals was a lot easier the second time around because by then we were doing live shows, we were touring a bit as well. And instead of like having to warm up and practice for weeks, I could just sort of like belt in there and jump into the booth and just like go. Fucked up again, Jesus Christ. This is the 50th time. One more. Yeah. sort of like I looked around to Luke and because <laughs> I, I knew he was writing up lyrics for the other songs and I was like right that's those ones done uh, what's next and he was like oh just got to write some lyrics and I was like wow <laughs> it, was, it was a new experience so because I ended up engineering that was taking up a lot of the time that I was going to use to finish writing the lyrics <laughs> Pick it up. That's your feeling. Where do you want to go from? Uh, fuck it from the start. You sure? Yeah. yeah. I think the very start was alright. No, it fucked up. Oh, here we go. At least it was in time. At least it was in time then. <laughs> Should we try it again? Okay. Watch the sirs. It says. <laughs> it was much, much better tone though. I think we go back and do it all on that bit lower. It sounds better. Let's go Towards the end of the recording, um, Aiden actually came back and helped me, uh, you know, record some of my vocals, which was nice. I didn't have to do all that myself. Uh, uh, okay, see what you're it's oh. better be good. I tell you the, uh, I tell you the low vocal. Just fucking copy it, mate. <laughs> hey, come on, bit of Shut effort. On, <laughs> oh, and I'm just, I just don't want the levels and shit to all be wrong. So. We all live by those rules. Certainly do, inspired a purse buyer. <laughs> Is there a song where we don't end going, yeah? <laughs> I very much doubt it. So I'm mixing this record myself, and also painting the kitchen at the same time, so I thought I'd come and give you a, uh, a look at what's going on. I knew Luke was uh, tying himself up in knots over the mixing. So I got trapped mixing the album uh, by myself again, and, uh, it's very, very difficult to mix our band because the kick drums take up so much of the frequency range that there's not enough room for guitars and, and, and bass, you know, let alone the samples and the vocals and all the rest of it. Um, and I end up driving myself crazy. I mean, I did something like 30 different mixes of the Simulate. And, um, you know, it got to the stage where I was bringing in other engineers again to help me. 
because I'm so attached, like, I just end up putting myself through hell. You know, I go to sleep and the riffs and the EQ settings and everything's still in my head. And um, oh, it's just insane. Uh, I'd call in like each week and just see how it was going. And each week it was kind of like, oh, I don't know, we can't get the guitars to stand out. And there was actually one painful part like where we'd put all the instruments and stuff down before the mixing was going to start where Luke was like, called me up one day after work going, bring your guitar around right now, we're going to re-record all the guitar parts. And I was just, uh, here we go again. Um, but eventually I remember one day we were doing a gig out at uh, just a place called EVs and I was waiting for Luke to turn up and me and Matt were standing up front and we just heard this this incredible sound like, uh, and Luke turned the corner and it sounded like some aeroplane was starting up inside like the space of his car and he parked and I was just hearing the most brutal fucking music and I I looked at him and I was like, dude, who whose album is that? And he's like, ours. And I was, I listened again and I was like, damn, it is. And he nailed the mix. <laughs>